is it possible that this global financial cycle is driven, at least in part, by US monetary policy? The global financial cycle is the co-movement of gross capital flows, of credit growth, of leverage and of risky asset prices around the globe. We tend to see a lot of commonality of financial intermediaries getting more leverage at the same time, of credit growing at the same time in a lot of geographical areas, and of capital flows cross-border being very correlated with one another. In some cases, it may translate into housing booms. Uh, in others, maybe not, but uh, there is a lot of commonality in those uh, credit aggregates, in those flows, and in those asset prices. I have uh, run a number of uh, what economists call VARs, um, which uh, use different identification techniques for monetary policy shocks in the US. And I uh, studied these effects of all these uh, monetary policy shocks on a very large number of variables. So I do find that US monetary policy is one of the drivers of this global financial cycle. It's not the only one, but it's one of the drivers. Let's imagine the Fed raises the interest rate in 2016 farther. So what does it mean? Well, what it means, according to my estimates, is that the leverage of financial intermediaries goes down, is that capital flows go down, and that funding conditions tighten around the globe. So now that may be important for a number of countries uh, which rely heavily on dollar funding or which have some dollarized financial system for one reason or the other. And in that case, that may uh, lead to more severe capital outflows out of these countries and uh, potentially to some uh, issues with uh, investment in those countries. Now, how big the real effects of those decrease in credits, of these decrease in flows will be, depend on a number of specific features of each country. I'm going to use mostly mortgage spread because... Why is the US so important? Because the US is at the center of the international monetary system because the dollar is an important funding currency for international banking in particular, but it's also widely used by asset managers. This is what makes the US special. The policy implications of my findings are that emerging markets, but not only emerging markets, advanced economies as well, cannot necessarily hit their optimal target of inflation or output stabilization in a world where the global financial cycle is important. What that means is that the interest rate is not enough in order to achieve your domestic target, even if you have a flexible exchange rate. So I do find, for example, transmission of the global financial cycles to economies such as uh, the UK or Canada or Sweden, which are you know, advanced economies with uh, floating exchange rates, with uh, developed capital markets. So what does that mean? Well, if the interest rate is not enough, you need additional tools. I think the first line of defense there are probably macroprudential tools. Depending on the type of transmission of, of a global financial cycle, if it is a financial stability problem, if it is because of a dollarization of the balance sheet, if it is because of other types of capital market imperfections, you want to use different macroprudential tools in order to get at the problem and to help uh, the traditional uh, instruments of monetary policy to be more effective. How to exactly use these tools depends on, uh, on more theoretical modeling that we still have to do. If macroprudential tools are not effective enough in countries where, for example, the banking system is not the only game in town, but there's a lot of market finance, one might have also to use capital controls. How effective these capital controls are, I think, is still a matter of debate and we need to gather information, we need to gather data from all the experiments that have been going on. I, I think there's probably not gonna be a very general message there. And each country will have to work out the optimal mix of tools. Compared to the, you know, 20 years ago, we are a lot more heterodox in terms of what kind of tools, what works for, for some countries and maybe for other countries. I think we should be much more open in terms of considering various options.
So I think the key takeaway now is that if you want to hit your domestic target, you need more tools than only your interest rate, and you, you need to consider a variety of instruments, macro prudential policies, possibly capital controls, and what will work will depend on your institutions, will depend on a number of things, so we have to be a lot more open.